in the tiny comments, but here we are. <laughs> Um, I'm Alma. I'm here today to do a bow bag sew along. So the bow bag is this cute little clutch bag here. Um, it's very easy, quick pattern to make um, and we're very excited that lots of you have been liking it and making it already but we thought we'd do a sew along. Sorry that's the iron getting angry at me. Um, so today for the sew along I'm going to use some scraps from my fabric stash and I'm also going to show you how to add little hoops, loops <laughs> to the bow bag so that you can also add a chain. So I just bought a chain with clips at either end and my plan is to add these loops to quite a few bow bags and just use the same chain on all of them. So I have the option to carry it on my shoulder or as a clutch bag, which is as it was intended. So cute with the bow going over it. So yes, here we are. I'm gonna wait a little bit to see <clears throat> if anyone else is joining in. But um, the sewing process is fairly straightforward. So hopefully it's one that you can just make following our instructions when you buy the pattern but um, we thought it'd be nice to do a sew along as well so you can follow step by step in the making. Now fabric wise what I'm using I still had some fabric scraps from the Miriam dress this one that I made this pattern is from our vintage dreaming ebook and I made this Miriam dress in this um, watermelon fabric, just a cotton. Uh, hi Jill! <laughs> and um, it's, I had, I kept some scraps because I always thought I want to make some kind of matching accessory to this dress, which I made the full set actually. I made the Miriam dress and the Miriam jacket. So it's really, really cute, as you can see. And it's quite dressy and I don't actually have a bag that goes with this. When I've worn it, I've worn a pink bag, but it's the wrong pink. Anyway, then we brought out the bow bag and I thought, well, that is the bag that I need to make to match this outfit. And I had a little bit of the watermelon cotton uh, left and a little bit of this pink um, cotton that I used for the lining. And it wasn't enough of either of the fabrics to make a full bag in one of them. But so this just shows you how you can get clever with the bow bag pattern pieces. You can mix and match a little bit. So what I'm going to do is make the bow in the watermelons, because that had to happen. And I'm going to make the front of the outside bag in the pink fabric, so the bow will really stand out. I've seen some people have done that. So they've used two contrasting fabrics and the bow really shows, which is really cute. So front of the bag, back of the bag is gonna be a another watermelon panel. And then the inside is all the pink fabric as the lining. Now, because they're both cottons and they're not particularly thick or sturdy fabrics, I've decided to interface all of the bag pieces, not the bow, because we like a little bit of flow there. But um, uh, the both pieces for the lining and both pieces for the outside bag are interfaced. And I just used some really cheap uh, interfacing that I had from my early days of sewing. It's just that papery stuff that you don't really want to use for your dressmaking uh, projects. But I thought it would be perfect for the bag because it makes it fairly stiff and I'm not wearing this, so I'm okay, even if it's a little bit um, papery and stiff. But so, that's um, another thing you can do with the bow bag. So I've made some versions that are a viscose on the outside. This one actually is a viscose on the outside, and I didn't interface any of the viscose pieces. But I interfaced the lining, which is a canvas. So the lining gives it, keeps it gives it the shape and then the viscous is just flowy and it gives it movement on the outside which is so nice. Hello Norma! Um, but yeah, so thank you for joining us for the sew along. 
am going to get going. I've got some instructions here. And we start with the bow, which feels like a very appropriate place to start for the bow bag. So the uh, seam allowances are 1.5 throughout the pattern. And we're going to get going. So I've got the two bow pieces, which are just the rectangle. And actually in the pattern, we've given you the measurements for the pieces that you need to cut. So if you don't want to print out the pattern, you can just draw it out on some paper or draw it straight on the fabric even better um, so you can get going straight away so wrong sides together let me check that they are yes wrong sides together the two bow pieces we're going to sew along the longer uh, sides with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance <laughs> First seam, and we're off. Feels official. <laughs> and the other one. And we're going to trim the seam allowance down to half its width. I might use my rotary cutter so it's a little bit faster and more precise. Uh, but you can absolutely use scissors for this. So here we go. Just trimming them down so it's not too bulky when we turn it around. And that's pretty much all you have to do for the bow. We're now going to create a bow loop to make the bow shape. But this is the body of the bow. So turning it around and I'm going to press it so that the seams are just on the edge. Here we go. This is, I'm going to say it's a lot easier to, easier and quicker to make using a cotton, but it looks the prettiest in a viscose. And the idea of the bow bag is that you make it to match your outfits. So we have a lot of, um, I th uh, we have a lot, what was that? Who misheard what? <laughs> um, we have a lot of lovely summer dresses, um, patterns that can be made in viscose and lots that can be made in cotton. So there will be a dress that you'll have enough scraps left over from to make a bow bag to go to match. Now, I'm going to take my um, bow piece and what you want to do is sew some gathering stitches in the center. So you could draw a line in the center if you want to be super precise. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna fold my bow piece in half so I have a vague guideline. I'm gonna lengthen my stitch length and I'm gonna sew some straight lines without back stitching at the beginning and end on either side of my fold line. one and leaving some long tails so I can gather and then the other one not back stitching again because we're gonna use these stitches to gather up the center so you don't want to lock them in let me change back my settings to a normal stitch because I've, I've been known to do this. I leave it on the settings for the gathering stitches and then it's really annoying. So always remember to switch it back. And now I'm just going to pull on those threads. Now this is cotton which doesn't gather up as nicely as viscose would. But it's doable. And 
what I want is to gather the center of the bow as much as possible, not to a specific length, just enough that I get that bow effect. So I'm going to be fairly gentle because gathering stitches often can snap. Ah, it's one of my least favorite things in the world, especially if you're gathering up a really long piece. <laughs> But okay, so I've gathered up that side as much as I can. I might try and get the beginning on this end gathered. Okay, so if I had a lighter fabric, it would probably gather more, but that's a bow. I think we can all agree. And I'm gonna secure that bow shape with a straight stitch. Might do. So I'm just keeping the bow gathered under the foot and sewing a straight stitch, normal settings. And I will backstitch this time because I do want this stitch to be secure. Okay, and we're fine. I always get scared with bulky bits under my machine foot. Okay, so now you can pull out your gathering uh, stitches. I'm going to skip that for speed's sake for now. I might go back and do it later, but for now I just want to get on with the sewing. And the next step is, so there we go, that's my gathered, whoop, that's a thread. Yeah, that's my gathered bow ready. There we go, cute, all ready. And then I'm gonna move on to the um, bow loop. Yes, so all I need to do is, this is it, it's a little rectangle. Again, very easy shapes on this pattern. Fold it in half, sorry, fold it in half um, so the two long edges meet together. And again, with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance, we are going to do a straight stitch, back stitching at the beginning and the end. Hmm. stuck that's nice always happens when you most need it right perfect a little technical difficulty with my machine today that's fun can't go smooth sailing all the time um when my threads get a bit stuck or i get a thread nest I usually just reset, reposition the bobbin and the top thread as well. Don't know if it's something magical that fixes things for me or the machine just likes to be reset. But hopefully it will work. Here we go. So have, have any of you already made a bow bag? I'd like to know that. And would you add some loops to use it with a chain as well? Or are you happy with just the clutch bag situation? Okay, so we've sewn the bag, the bow loop. I'm gonna cut the seam allowances down again. Same as the previous piece. And then I'm going to turn this around. Now, turning loops can be fiddly. Something I found useful. I do have a loop turner, but I'm, we, we're having a fight at the moment. It doesn't always work. But I found that something like this, like a pencil with this little tab to clip on, uh, it's 
can be very useful. So for short loops like this, uh, for short tubes like this, uh, you just pop it like that and then it can help you turn it around because it has a little bit of something to hold on to. Here we go. I'm almost seeing the other end. There it is. There we go. Okay. And voila. Nice little trick there. And I want to press this flat, keeping the seam at the back. So there's my seam. I'm going to press it like this so that the seam doesn't show once the loop is on the bow. Voila. And then I'm going to create a loop. So wrong sides together. And by wrong sides, we mean, uh, sorry, right sides together. And by right sides, we mean the side without the seam. So wrong, right. So right sides together, short ends together. And here we go. Still 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. We just wanted to keep the same seam allowance throughout. And you just trim it. So it's not too ooh, bulky when you turn it around. So trim it down as close as you can. So that's the seam. Big. I'm going to trim very close to the seam. Sorry, I keep checking. I have a baby camera basically for my dog because he was going to get too loud if he stayed in here. So that's why I keep checking on here. He's behaving just about okay so far. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so I've turned the loop right around the right way and I'm gonna press it just the seam allowances to one side or you could press them open but they're quite tiny at this point so it's easier to do them to one side and there's my loop and we're gonna thread <laughs> whoop, thread the bow through the loop basically so we're doing this now before the bow goes on the bag yeah, easier said than done. Here we go. Okay. And you want to place it in the middle where your gathering is. And now <clears throat> at this point, if you want, you can secure the loop to the bow with a few hand stitches just so that the loop doesn't move around. So you would be catching the bow and the back of the loop so that there's no stitches showing, but you know that the loop isn't going anywhere. I'm gonna skip that for the sew along, but by all means do that for a neater finish. But there is our bow, looking pretty cute. So the next thing we want to do is attach the bow in its fullness to the front outside of our bag. So in my case, I'm using a pink panel for the front. And you want to make sure, because I did this mistake the other day, make sure that your um, the seam on the loop of the bow is facing the front of the bag, not the other way around, because I'd hand stitched it and everything was looking neat and, I, and then I attached it the wrong way around. Silly. Uh, so uh, you've got your bow, you're going to align the bow. The top of the bow aligns with the little notch you've got at the top of the bag piece. So you can pin it down on both sides and so close to the edge, just make sure that so this is just like a securing stitch. Uh, make sure that you're sewing within the 1.5 
seam allowance. So I'm gonna go at around one centimeter. I'm not gonna back stitch. It's just keeping it in place while we construct the rest of the back. So that's it on one side. And we do the same with the other. So the top of the bow goes aligned to the notch at the top of the bag piece. And you can already see the effect, effect of the bow in one fabric and the bag in another. It's really cute. So again, just securing that bow to the front within the 1.5 seam allowance. Lovely. And then that is the front of our bag, ready to go. Very cute. At this point, we want to prepare our zip. Now, I've got a, I think this is an, could be a 10 inch zip. So it's not quite the right length, but we're gonna adjust for that. It's all good. And we have some zip tabs which are just little pieces of fabric to cover the ends of the zip so that it looks neater on top. Um, so you can see if I show you on this one, there's like a nice finish to the zip. It's a bit of fabric and then you get the corner. Just a nice little detail. I've done these in my pink fabric. Could have done it in the other one. Um, if you're doing a uh, I guess if you're using two different types of fabric, I would use the lighter fabric. So if you have a viscous outside and a canvas inside, you want the one on the outside so that it's um, uh, lighter and less bulky. And also it matches the whole bag like this one. Uh, so all you want to do is press those tabs in half. So the two short sides join together, press that in. I've kind of finger pressed it and we're going to start with the end of the zip that has the tab on it and you want to align the folded edge of the zip tab with the end of the zip. Can you see? So that's the folded nice pretty edge and all the raw edges are going to get uh, enclosed in other ways so it's all good. Now this is a little bit fiddly especially at this end I find. So you can pin it and also I would recommend using a shorter stitch on your machine to attach this and I'm gonna do quite a lot of it using the just turning the wheel by hand just so I can be more precise and you don't want to sew with force and speed on top of the zip zipper teeth. Zip teeth? Zip teeth. So there we go. Aligned with the end, that's the folded edge of the zip tab. I'm gonna do a smaller stitch and you're basically sewing along that folded edge to secure the tab. So let's get careful with this one. I'm gonna open up my zip but it's important to pin the tab on the closed zip just so you have a more realistic shape. Um, I'm also not gonna bother backstitching here because the ends of the zip will all be secured in other steps. So I don't think I need to worry about that. And as I said, it is a little bit fiddly sewing on here. So there we go. Wheeling it. Having to help the whole thing along a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, that's one side done at least. <laughs> I would take your time on this step. I'm gonna rush things a little bit just because of the, I want to get as far as possible on this project today and so along, but take your time. Iron. I don't know, does anyone else have a cordless iron? Mine's very demanding. If you don't use it for a little bit, it starts beeping. Okay. So. I've sewn that down. And at this point, because my zip is a little bit longer than I need it to be, I'm going to align the zip with the front of the bag there's my finished end basically and this is my other end and i want it i want the total zip with the tabs to be as long as the top of the bag piece so i want to place that second tab in a place that it will end exactly flush with the edge of the bag so let me just pin that in for a second and place it like that. Here's my other tab. So I want, again, folded edge facing the inside of the zip, I guess. <laughs> like Folded edge is what you'll keep and what you'll see. So there it is. And that's flush with the end of the bag. I'm going to pin that in so I know where I want my zip tab to be. There we go. I'm going to sew that down and then I'm going to chop off the excess of the zip. You could definitely chop the zip first, but I quite like to have the security that if I've messed up, I can fix it and just unpick something. Whereas once you've cut the zip, you can't go back, can you? Scary commitment <laughs> so again let's see if I can be a bit quicker now I'm reaching the teeth I'm definitely using my hand wheel because I don't want my needle to break okay one worked out better the the other end is harder to do because you're at the open end of the zip it's a bit more flappy so take your time on that one and then this one should be easier there you go and so I've got all these flappy bits <laughs> of zip that I don't need and I'm gonna cut it um what's gonna be sewn to the bag is actually the zip tab so I don't need to have the zip going all the way to the end so I'm just going to cut the zip near the seam. There we go. Fab! There's my zip ready to be attached to my bag. So I've got the front of my bag, which is the one with the bow now. I'm going to put my zip uh, right sides together. I'm going to put the opening there um, so that when you have the bag going to go like that to open but you could put it on the other side why not and I'm gonna pin the zip to the front of the bag and using a zipper foot we're gonna sew it down now because at the beginning of the zip you just have fabric in those little tabs um, you kind of want to work out your seam allowance or the distance that you're going to be sewing from according to the teeth of the zip so what basically I mean is <laughs> that to sew this down I'm going to be sewing around here right so close to the teeth don't worry about getting too close on this one it's fine 
Um, and I should say I'm using a regular zip today, but you can also use an invisible zip and an invisible zip foot. So I want to be sewing here. I need to work out, start working at that distance at the very beginning where I don't have the zip teeth to guide me. So you could draw a line to guide you. I'm gonna eye it up, but probably safer to draw that line so you know where you're going from the start. So got my foot here. Switch around and my zip is closed at the moment but we're gonna open it up when we get closer to the end so I can be so I can get through the whole length. Now are we still in the right place? Nope. There we go. See what I told you? You need to switch back your settings as soon as you can. Otherwise, there we go. Otherwise, you forget to do it. That happens to me all the time. So, this is attaching the zip to the front of the outside of the bag. We're reaching the end of the zip. I'm gonna put my needle down, lift my foot, and try very hard to wiggle. Oh, that went quite smoothly actually. <laughs> wiggle the puller out of the way and finish off that seam. There we go. So that was the zip to the front of the bag. Now I'm gonna get a piece of lining. Yes, lovely. I've made this bag like five times, but it's always good to check. <laughs> so I'm gonna make uh, get take one piece of lining, which in my case is this pink fabric today. And you want to sandwich your zip in between the outside bag and the inside bag. I'm going to pin them together, but then I'm going to sew from this side. So the side that I've already sewn, because then I can just go over that line and know that I'm at the right seam allowance. Easy. You've created a guide for yourself. See? So it's wrong sides together, front of the bag, front lining. And you should also have think you do a notch in the middle to help you align those pieces but it should all match up so here we go I'm gonna sew from the side that already has stitching on and where's my puller remember to get rid of that zipper zip puller when it gets in the way so definitely back stitching now. And I'm just going over the same stitching line. There it goes again. <laughs> and so I know I'm sewing in the right place. I've reached my puller, so needle down. Hello, Sarah. Oh, thanks for joining us. <laughs> so needle down, foot up, wiggle that pull it out of the way so you can keep sewing and also make sure it shouldn't be getting in the way but make sure that the bow isn't getting caught in anything you know in case it's uh, wandering into your seams you don't want that front outside bag front lining and I'm just going to give it a little press because of the interfacing I'm using it's quite crisp <laughs> and as I said it's not what you want in your dressmaking interfacing but it's perfect for this and it means you can finger press quite easily and it stays in place 
but I'm still going to use a little bit of the iron. Trying to use the tip and not so too much over the zip because it's plastic and it can melt. And that is not what we need or want. So I'm just pressing the top on both sides to make sure that it's looking crisp and nice. Goes. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Okay, so now what we need to do is exactly the same but on the other side. So we have one end of the zip is still free. I'm going to repeat those steps starting with the back outside bag, which in my case is going to be the watermelons. So, same again. I'm going to, so from the zip side, so let's go here. I'm going to open it for because it's now in the way at the very start. Don't want that. So right side of the bag to right side of the zip. Pin them together and just repeat what we did earlier. With a zipper foot still on your machine. Although do remember to change that over as well. You'll probably see me forget in a few minutes. And just for everyone who's joined later, I'm making a bow bag and using cotton. I've used some sort of crispy interfacing, papery interfacing to give it body. And I'm gonna, so the bow bag is a clutch bag that gets held through the lovely bow detail love that touch but I'm going to be adding some loops so that you can add a chain if you so wish okay so oh, this is not staying in place at all here we go and we're gonna go sort of here again I'm kind of calculating where I'll be sewing next to the teeth so that I get the right distance to sew at the start, the right seam allowance, and I think I'm just about okay. Yeah, that one was a bit closer. <laughs> so, there. It's not behaving very nicely. Here we go. Okay the zip pull so needle down oh needle wasn't down naughty needle down Alma there we go I thought the other two had gone way too smoothly oh problem come out. Get nervous. I haven't done one of these in a while. You can definitely use normal interfacing. Yes. I think it depends how crisp you want your bag to be. Um, or how floppy. <laughs> We're back in business, hopefully. Okay. Here we go. to the zip 
is attaching the final piece of the lining, which is pink for me, to the zip. So I've got my outside back, outside piece. I've got my zip there. I want to sandwich the zip in between the two fabrics. So right side towards the zip. And I'm going to sew again from the side that I've stitched already so I have a guiding, a guiding line. Anything that makes it easier, we like, you know? And I mean, I'm going fairly fast for this. You can take your time and make a beautiful, perfect, impeccable bag. But I made this one in 40 minutes the other day because I really wanted to wear it out for dinner. I had it all cut out and all interfaced already but I sewed like I was possessed <laughs> and I did make it in 40 minutes. Um, it's definitely not my uh, tidiest one that I've made but it works and it looks so nice and I wore it so proudly out and about. And I just love, I, I love matching accessories. I know some people absolutely hate that and that's okay. You could make a plain bow bag to go with lots of different outfits, maybe in your favorite color that you use a lot. Why not? Oh, zip the pull. Let's not repeat the mistakes of our past. Here it is. And there we go. And uh, yeah, you can make one that you can wear with all your handmade outfits, or you can make a matching one. Um, which, personally, I think is adorable, and it's a very, very good way of using up your scraps. These were all scraps from, like, last year, when I made this dress, which is the Miriam dress, from the Vintage Dream Mini book. Um, so I kept hold of those. I am a bit of a hoarder when it comes to scraps. And what's happening here? There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna again finger press those panels away from the zip. And then I'm gonna use the iron a little bit as well. Oh, there's a rogue thread in the middle there where I messed up. Whoopsie. Hey, it's all very real. This is not pre-recorded. This is live and alive. It's good. Everyone makes mistakes. It happens. It's how you learn. The more mistakes you make, the more you learn not to make them. Am I right? Is with me. Okay, so that's basically the outside of the bag and that's the inside of the bag and we have a zip in the middle. So now I'm going to add, I'm gonna get rid of my zipper foot, remembered, that's good. Back to my normal machine foot. And this is where I'm adding something that's not in the pattern. So they are the strap loops so that you can attach a strap or chain to your bag. Sorry, that chain is so noisy. And just if you want to make yours, I've made mine quite long, but you can make them shorter. You can maybe add a little ring, metal ring. I don't know. Um, oh no, see. It happens, it happens, Jill, don't worry. Um, you can rewatch this later as well if, uh, you know, if we get out of sync. Um, so it's a rectangle piece, I've cut two, and they are, for the quite long ones, they are 8.5 centimeters by five centimeters. We'll put these details in the description so they stay there. Uh, so two, I've used my watermelon fabric. You could use your lining fabric if you've got whatever you've got left, but it will look nice in the same fabric as the outside. And uh, I'm going to press them in half first, so long sides together, and then press the two long edges towards the center and make a little tab like that. 
let's do that. So pressing them in half. And then pressing the outside edges. You can also finger press this, but so pressed it in half first to give myself a guideline, then the long edges go towards that middle line. That makes sense. Da, 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 like that. And then press again like that. So you have a finished little tab. And I'm going to top stitch that along the open side. Again, I wouldn't worry too much about back stitching this because the ends are going to be trapped. Caught. I always say trapped, which means sounds so aggressive. Um, but they're going to be trapped, uh, caught again, <laughs> caught in a seam. So, you know, the threads will be secured that way. There. So that's it. That's one of my loops, just top stitched along the side that was open. And now same with the other one. So press fold in half and then long sides towards that fold and then in half again. Hopefully that makes sense. Oop, ah, there we go. Ah, everything's falling over, dogs barking. It's all good guys, <laughs> we'll get through it. And uh, also I was gonna say with these little loops for the chain or strap, I made a version in using viscose and so I was using viscose for the tabs and I thought that's probably not very strong. So I decided to interface them. But with this cotton, I think it's okay because it's four layers. Four layers of cotton feels okay. Whereas viscous is just too flimsy, so I interfaced it. Just one extra little step. Okay, now, where do I want those strap loops to go? I want them caught in a seam here because what we're gonna do next is so front to front and back to, um, sorry, outside front and back and lining front and back pieces. So we wanna catch that loop somewhere. Um, I'm gonna fold these in half, the strap loops and I'm going to catch them in here. Let me see if I can see. So that's my outside bag, the front with the bow, the back with the watermelons. I'm going to put my folded up ta uh, loop here in that fold. So flush with the edge and with the loop facing inside the bag, basically. This might be quite chunky to pin. You could use one of those wonder clips maybe. So same again on the other side, front outside, back outside, loop. I hope you can see that. And I'm going to, um, I might just, you could secure them in place with a few stitches. I might just get sewing the rest of the bag because we're nearing the end and I'll just do a bit of back and forth on that uh, point where the loop is just to reinforce it. I think that's what I'll do. Now I'm aligning all the edges so I'm joining my outside bag pieces together along the bottom and the sides and pinning all the way around and I'm going to sew those edges with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance and similarly on the ah, on the lining side 
I am going to do that, but I'm going to leave a, an open side, an open section on one of the sides. You can leave it at the bottom, absolutely, up to you. I like it on the side because uh, that opening is going to be finished with some hand stitching. My hand stitching is not the best. I'm just not very neat when it comes to hand stitching. Never learned. I need to get better. Um, but I think that on the side of the bag lining, it's much less visible. Like you're gonna kind of touch the bottom of the bag more often than you do the side, on the inside, I think. So better to put the weak spot where it won't get touched too much. So um, let's say that this, this is my lining. Can you see? I'll do it from this side so you can see. So lining pieces, outside pieces. I'm going to say that this is the side of the lining that I leave slightly open. So I'm going to start do a few stitches at the top, leave a gap and then sew all along the side. And then I'll do all the other edges, which are all continuous. That's the only one. It's good to start with the one where you need to leave the gap because trust me, you will forget. <laughs> I have. So I'm just going to do a little bit on the end there. And I've that stitched. And then our ah, pins. Okay, dog, stop barking. That's a good update. And then, so I'm gonna stitch a little bit there, I'm gonna skip, leave a gap, and start around here and all the way down. Okay. Now, I'm getting to the bit where the strap loop is. So it's a bit bulky, I'm gonna increase the tension a bit. And I'm gonna go slow. And back stitch to secure it. And over again. Okay, and we're over the tricky bit. Okay. Back stitch at the end. Lovely, we're getting there. I think I'm gonna carry on to the end even if we go over a little bit a few minutes because it seems a shame when we're so close not to finish. Uh, I'm now sewing, what is this, the outside of the back bottom, outside pieces together at the bottom. centimeter seam allowance. I'm now on the side, um, outside bag lining. I'm going to sew continuously here because I don't need to leave a gap here. We've done that already on the other side. Okay. And we're off and we're about to get to the strap loop. So once again, I'm gonna go slow. And back stitch. Okay. And now carry on. So I'm now sewing on the lining side. And all we have left to do is The bottom of the lining pieces need to be sewn together and then we create the bottom of the bag which is another little detail we added so that it has a flat bottom. And this is where the slightly odd shape of the pieces comes into play. So you see you have these bits cut out. So this is what you do is just a little 
um, nicer touch for giving it, giving the bag shape. So I'm going to open up that gap here so that you have basically your seams are meeting. So I have a seam there, I have a seam there, they're meeting up flush. So you have a straight edge there and you sew on that. This is the only seam allowance that's different. It's 0.5 centimeters. Okay. I'm gonna go there. And you're going to repeat that for every corner of the bag so that you see you're creating that shape um, just make sure you're folding the seam allowances in the same direction so you see here I've got the seam allowances going that way I want the same on this side so it's all as flat as possible okay we're almost done it's very exciting <laughs> I'm gonna skip uh, hand sewing the opening but apart from that I think we get everything done okay. uh, this step is a little bit fiddly with my crispy <laughs> interfacing <laughs> bag has a bit of a mind of its own now. Okay. So five, 0.5 centimeters seam allowance for these corners. We're getting them. I love that feeling when you know that you've only got one step or two left. Isn't it the best? <laughs> I do love the process of sewing but I love the moment of the result. Ah of course now thread's gone. <laughs> um but with this with bags and coats and things like that there's always that moment at the end where you bag something out and it's, uh, it takes its true shape <laughs> in front of you. So that's what we're gonna do with this one. When we turn it around from the gap we left earlier. There we go. Okay, nothing to trim at this point. Let's just find that gap. Where's it gone? There we go. It's not very big, so it will take a little bit of fiddling. <gasps> now, what I didn't do was open the zip very much. That was a mistake before you sew the pieces together. So I'm gonna have to face that problem when we get to it. <laughs> but so just pulling through the lining through to the right side first. That's where the gap is. Ba, ba, ba. I want to do this quickly, but I also don't want to rip this. I have very conflicting feelings right now. Ugh. Okay, lovely. So I can see my the right side of the lining now. And I left just a tiny, tiny gap in the zip. Uh, but I think I can get it open, hopefully, because I need that zip open so that I can pull out the outside of the bag. Come on, work with me, zip. So there's the lining, lovely, we can see that at least. <laughs> oh no. Okay, I think. Oh, yes, it's gone. Thank God. 
That would have been so disappointing if I couldn't show you the bag because I forgot to open the zip. How silly. Okay, so that's my lining. I'm gonna turn everything inside out. This is the moment I was talking about. Where you actually see what you've made and how all the seams that you've been sewing actually makes sense. Now, you want to poke all the corners out. You want to use your new strap loops to pull out that corner. That's quite handy. There it is. Same on the other side. Lovely. And you probably want to give it a press, but I'm going to skip that today. But definitely give it a press, being careful. Maybe using a tailor's hand. Okay, and just ease out all of the corners the best way you can. Ta-da! Definitely needs a press. But how cute is that? And then I've only got a gap in on the side of my lining there that I'm going to hand sew later on. But there we go, the inside's pink, the outside is watermelons, and it's so cute! Now let's see if I can put my chain on it. And it's the moment of truth. Yes, I can. A bit fiddly, but I can. So I mentioned earlier, I made the tabs quite long just to make it easier to sew really <laughs> but you can make them shorter there we go cute you could make them shorter or you could make them as long as i did which was 8.5 centimeters by 5 centimeters for the piece and what i've done with this one thank you thank you jill <laughs> what i've done with this one is i added little um snap fasteners to the strap loop and to the back of the bag so that if I want to use my bow bag as a clutch there are no flapping bits it still has that lovely shape and I can use it like that but then oh I'm quite tired of carrying the bag at the long wedding pop and add the chain and you're back in the game so there we go but yeah I'm very happy thank you guys <laughs> for working along with this so long with me I think that's very cute I will have to take a picture but you've got the idea there I've got my jacket with my lining and I've got the same fabrics on the bow bag so cute thank you so much and um, so yeah I hope you've enjoyed this I hope you'll try the bow bag and let us know please tag us if you share your bow bags on Instagram tag so over in London and use the hashtag SOI bow bag because we would absolutely love to see your versions and it's as you saw that was an hour pretty much yeah that was pretty much an hour um after cutting and interfacing and all of that but the sewing is very quick and you can use the tiniest little pieces of fabric that you've got in your stash and a zip you probably have a zip lying around look i had this pink zip it's not the matching zip the matching pink to the pink i used in the fabric do i care not really. So you definitely must have things in your stash that you can use to make up one of these. And we really hope that you will. So thank you so much for joining us and see you next time. Bye.